other sponsor related things but okay guys here we are this is the no dice gaming show match series we did a show match with them a couple weeks ago if you recall uh it was a little bit lackluster if we're going to be honest but this one should be the badass one to make up for it because in the top left corner of the map this best of five we've got the blue terran liquid tasia oh uh hang on Apparently, I invited the wrong barcode. What a shock you, when you've got a barcode for a name. <laughs> you invited both barcodes, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's definitely two barcodes in there, because one was Masters and one was Platinum. Well, I'm supposed to be on Busy, but I'm getting whispers here from the, uh... I don't know why that's showing up as a whisper. Anyways, okay, you want to choose the other player? Off to a rocky start. Alright. Right. <laughs> in the bottom right, as the Red Zerg player, it's now CM Revival. Yeah, that was a bit of a unforeseen pickup. Revival is a player that's been kind of bouncing around since TSL. I mean... Wow, he was on EG for actually kind of a long time. He was only there supposed to, he was supposed to only be there for Pro League, but... Um, but I, I love Revival. A little longer. I love Revival, but what did he accomplish on EG? I mean, really. He got... People don't remember this, but him and his teammate both got first and second at like an IAM. <laughs> I am terrible then because I really don't remember that. Yeah, I, just, I don't know who got first and who got second, but it was him and, uh, not Alive, but the third one they picked up for Protoss. Oh my god. Well, the thing about Revival is, like, he would pop, he'd crop up in the weekly events, right? Like, go for StarCraft or Zotac or whatever, and he'd fare okay, but he, I, I don't think I even recall him making it to, like, the quarterfinals in recent days type thing. So, I'm not calling him bad by any means, guys. I love Revival. I've been a big fan of him since TSL and, of course, the Wings of Liberty, but... Just in recent days, I haven't... Like, well, I guess there's an IM. I'm stupid, I miss. But, like, in recent days, I haven't <laughs> seen much out of him. So, it, for me, it was a weird pickup. But I'm glad they did. Because, like, he's he's a guy with a lot of potential that didn't get a chance to, like, I think... I don't know. Shine? Yeah, I don't know. There's, like, you know, there's the three Koreans that not many people knew of, right? That EG picked up for Pro League. And they were solid enough for Pro League, for sure. I think they were good pickups. But... As far as, you know, they were kind of the faceless Koreans, let's be honest. It was Alive, like, Protoss, I can't remember, for the love of God, and Revival. Um, and, like, in that tournament that they actually placed really highly and was an IEM that, like, I don't think many people watched because it was on, like, a super odd time. So, yeah, I, uh, I mean, I like all of them for sure, but it is a surprise that Cooler Master, like, was like, hey, this seems like a good pickup, but, you know, maybe... Paul had some say in it, you know, maybe it was like, this is a really good practice partner, let me, you know, go ahead and, and get this, because I actually had no idea CM was even looking to add more players, well, right? They lost Panda Tank recently, right? I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure he retired, I remember reading something about that. I mean, I like well, Panda Tank too, but he was another another one of those players who was just kind of like, a, not a big blip on the radar type thing. Right, yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, maybe CM has a... You know, plans for their a future actual team rather than just more like uh, you know tiny personal sponsorships. I don't know, but if that is the case, then revival and future you know good solid because that really does describe a lot of these uh, you know Koreans that are going around you know not really on a team. They're solid. They're just not really breakout. Yeah, I gotta tell you too. We take a break from uh, talking about revival hardcore here. It's really nice seeing Tasia play one v ones, even if it's from like the casting perspective. I watch a stream all the time. And like it's usually two v twos or replays, and like he rarely actually does like a lot of hardcore one v one ladder streams or anything like that. So it's nice to see him in uh, true form today. We'll see how he does versus this guy that we've been talking and gabbing about for the first five minutes of the game. Well, luckily both of them did go for everything that is pretty much standard. I believe that Tage actually went for a fourteen CC as there was no Reaper, so I'm pretty sure on that one, and no second supply deep at the front as well. See, they always, I don't think it's forgetting so much as they just don't really care, but they don't put another supply depot there. And that kind of bothers me. I don't know how many times I've told, like, I've seen an all-in where they break through the front and maybe they can hold on the ramp in the in the main and there's no supply depot there. <laughs> so they're like, oh, at the top oh of the wow. Ramp, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I think it's one of those things too where it's like, all right, if I lost my front, maybe I'm probably going to lose the back anyways, or I don't know. Logic. <laughs> It was, well, uh, anyways. I was going to say, if he's going to try and perform that scouting role that uh, Lings normally would, but this couple of Hellings are going to maybe slip by. I don't know if he'll use these to go fry drones or if he'll just stay for creep. It looks like it's just going to be for creep. 
Two Hellions, not really the best to go fry drones. If they have any links well, at all, you're probably not going to do a lot of damage. Yeah, and this isn't those super fast Hellions either. Like, if you get two Hellions out really, really, really quick, you can actually get across the map and score some really nice kills, even if it's only a couple. But uh, what we already see are a ton of Roaches coming out of Revival, so he's going to be good for the Hellion aggression. Oh, look at this. He's doing it all in. <laughs> yeah. We're going to see about the Supply Depot on the top ramp. It could, uh, it could come into great effect. Uh, the thing about Daedalus Point 2 is it's got a really short rush distance. Again, this is something I always bring up on the map because it's deceptive. It's wider than it is tall, so it looks like a big map, but it's actually pretty sh pretty small, pretty short. And uh, Getting reinforcements from Revival's base to flood in, to follow up with Lings and Bailings will not be too much of an issue. This Banshee's going to help for sure, but it's one lone Banshee. A second one's going to be joining it shortly, but it's not the Roaches he's got to worry about so much as the Banelings that'll be following this as well. The Banshee just doesn't attack fast enough to kill all the Banelings before they connect to this ramp. Yeah. Uh, Tasia might think this is just Roaches right now. I don't think he's actually seen enough Lings for him to be like, okay, it's a Roach Baneling all in. Right? Nope, he didn't see it. Never mind. All right, because there's no bunkers going down, right? Like, look okay, what's now happening. Okay, now he sees. Now he sees. He's got to know. All right, there we go. There's like no reason not to have this much. Okay, well, hang on. We got the Banelings going to walk into the wall here. No speed necessary, and it's just going to collide and everything. <laughs> Loads the Marines, actually. Tries to draw the fire a little bit. Will take out most of the Banelings, but will he be able to clean up the Roaches and Lings is going to be the question. I mean, actually, with the Hellions still being alive, maybe able to just barely deal with these Lings. So repairing the Hellions, too. Going to block some out with the SCVs. Now it's just a couple of Roaches for the Banshees. Tasia's going to hold this quite nicely. That was actually a surprisingly easy hold for Tasia, considering he actually knew nothing about it happening. But that actually... I mean, Banshees, they're always going to save you, just the amount, like, it's like it's Roaches when. versus Mutas, right? It's, yeah. it's, yeah, exactly, it's when they save you, so did you lose 30 SCDs or only 10 SCDs before the Banshees actually cleaned everything up? And actually, Tasia only lost five? <laughs> like, yeah. Wow. Um, really impressive, for sure. Yeah, very impressive. I mean, Revival did drone behind this, like, immediately, he only did that, that one attack. I guess he has some lings for, like, backup, but, um... Well, that, uh, yeah, if he didn't have a third base down, like... There's a lot of Roach Banelings that go off of two bases, and I always talk about, like, Hyun was the first guy I... I don't know if he... He didn't invent this style, obviously, but Hyun is the first guy I saw consistently and always do the three base Roach Baneling hits, and I've always thought those were better, because you can always recover out of those, whereas if this was still two bases, Revival would be in a pretty deep hole. Yeah. Plus those, you know, those three base, like, the really big Roach uh, Baneling attacks that would happen, like, in a, a few minutes. They're also was really good for this, you know, map, because the third is so out there. It's kind of, like, jetting forward. And there's a really nice space around it. Kind of, like, that's why we see Roach Hydra on this map a lot, too. But uh, it's not going to be what Revival's thinking right now. He's thinking, I just need to drone up and actually get an economy again, because Teja is matching me on a worker supply, and that's not, that's not good, because he has three mules at the time. And I do not. And the Banshees are even adding in more damage as there's two spore he's... pullers per base, but he's still finding areas to kill drones. Exactly. Like, being able to weave in and out like this. It's funny because a lot of the drones weren't dying. I was kind of worried he wouldn't get any kills there for a second. But, you know, it's only at the third, though. You got to remember, guys, Revival's still mining halfway off of two while this is going on. So it's a little bit of harass. It's a little bit annoying. But, you know, he gets about 10 kills so far. Doesn't lose the Banshees either. He's also, more importantly, secured his own third behind this. Yeah, exactly. There's no way that ta uh, Revival is going to put on any pressure, you know? He's going to be trying to drone up and, of course, dealing with those Banshees. So Tasia could take that pretty pretty easily. In fact, once he saw that there wasn't a follow-up, that's that's he imme immediately took it. So uh, Tasia's actually looking really good in this game. I mean, he's at 61 SCVs. The supply really tells the story. So Revival's trying to get out Mutalus just so the medevacs don't, like, you know, completely destroy him. But the Mutas aren't good in, in head-on engagement, and that's what Tasia's going to go for. Yeah, that's a pretty nice force coming too. It's not a huge like death ball by any means, but this may just be a little bit too much to contest with. If the Widowmines get some really choice hits off on those Banelings and the Marines don't have to split too much, he's got stim, guys. Combat shells might not be done, but he's got stim, and that's all you really need to dance. But uh, it's got to be a little bit careful. We see him being a little bit tenacious, doesn't want to go too deep. Trying to get on a third, finds a good spot, and unfortunately here come the Banelings, but without speed, picks up all the Marines though, and just going to go drop in the main. And Oh, classic, classic Terran problems right now. <laughs> Where it's just like, uh, was it the Star Station problem, as it were? Just gonna, he's just gonna <laughs> drop up on top. But uh, you know, if, if Revival responds to the top cliff, guys, Tasia's just gonna drop at the bottom oh. unless he walks face first into a bunch of Bailings. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, he's trying to click on the Bailings to start your focus fire, and then actually don't. <laughs> they just walk into the Bailings. Awkward. Commentary. 
Yeah, but he does pick up and he tries to go ahead and cancel the force. Does actually not work out, but he picks up actually the majority of his units. Thought they were going to die right there. Uh, one other thing that the revival just is not going his way is the fact that the upgrades are already halfway done for two two for Tage. I mean, look at this backup army. Like. <laughs> We're focusing on that one army, and here's a brand Little new mines one. Little are getting money hits off. Every Banley dead now. No way for such a small amount of mutilists to engage into these marines. Gonna try to anyways, because he kind of has to, but that's gonna be game. Revival loses, and Tasha takes game number one in this best of five. Yeah, that hold for the all-in was just really, really good. Uh, I mean, like, 15 drones, is or SCVs, rather, is, I guess, a position where you can try and come back, but really, it's like... 25 plus, I'd say. <laughs> Just five is like depressingly low. <laughs> oh, couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, next map's gonna be Habitation Station, guys. We're gonna squeeze in a commercial break while we get this uh, up and running. So, thank you very much for tuning in, everybody, and we'll see you again in just a moment for some more games.